Peter. Next Monday on the WB, the time has come. A prophecy is fulfilled. A child is born. They protect it, right? Now, the forces of darkness will seek a newborn power. This whole thing has been a miracle. Witness the birth of Angel's son. The episode that changes everything. Angel, next Monday on the WB. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? This message is brought to you by WB56 Family First. Next on WB56. American Airlines Fly 587 plummets to the ground, killing all 260 people on board and several more on the ground. We're live in New York. Will today's crash affect your plans to fly this holiday season? Several people say they're too nervous to fly anytime soon. We can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. Governor Jane Swift lashes out at the legislature and for not passing a budget due more than three months ago. And if you're over the age of 45, you have a 20% chance of developing diabetes. We'll show you what to look out for. The 10 o'clock news starts right now. People in this close-knit neighborhood of Queens have spent the past two months struggling to recover from the losses in the World Trade Center. Then, disaster strikes again. This time, even closer to home. Immediately veered over to the right, and uh, it came nose down, uh, only a block away from where I was working. American Airlines Flight 587 plummets to the ground just four minutes after takeoff from JFK. Hundreds of people are killed on the plane and on the ground. Thousands more across the country filled with anxiety over getting on a plane ever again. I've had my tickets changed, and we're just going to go ahead and head back. Tonight, investigators are piecing together what caused the crash of Flight 587. But first, a breaking story in Afghanistan. Taliban military forces appear to have deserted the capital of Kabul after a series of military victories by the Northern Alliance. Good evening. I'm Karen Marinella. And I'm Jeff Barr. Not much more than that is known right now. Of course, we'll bring you more as it becomes readily available to us. But we do want to give you the very latest on the crash of American Airlines Flight 587. Grant Rampey's in Bell Harbor, New York, with the very latest. Well, we're just a few blocks from the crash site. Many here in the neighborhood were just waking up this morning when they say they heard what sounded like a huge gas main exploding. The houses literally shook. While across New York, many braced for the impact of what they thought was a replay of 9-11. It was just after 9 a.m. American Airlines Flight 587 lifted off from JFK. Early in its ascent, the pilot apparently detected a major problem. Witnesses say they saw the plane dumping its fuel, then it spiraled into the ground, nose first. I heard a loud crackling noise, and I looked up, and I saw the, uh, the, the left engine coming away from the plane. You actually saw it separate? Yes, I saw it coming away from the plane, and I saw a lot of debris coming from behind it. Investigators have the flight voice recorder. It's being examined at NTSB headquarters in Washington, but already, they say, all evidence points to this being an accident, the likely result of catastrophic mechanical failure. We are really just in the opening phases of this investigation. Obviously, it will be a very exhaustive one. Responding to initial fears that this may have been another terrorist attack, officials were quick to say there was no unusual radio traffic prior to the crash. There were no suspicious names on the manifest, and no threats had been received prior to 587's departure. The fact that one of the plane's engines was found blocks from the rest of the wreckage is a major clue. The room just exploded. My daughter got blown through the patio doors. My wife got blown into the living room, and I got blown out the patio doors behind my daughter. Today's crash comes as this community, 15 miles from Manhattan, is still grieving for its dead from September 11th. That tragedy, two months and one day ago, claimed 70 people from the neighborhood. So I don't mean in any way to minimize this, but it could have been far worse. There are any number of ways in which this could have been far worse. As investigators haul away pieces of the plane tonight, we understand they have found the flight data recorder. It will undoubtedly answer many questions about what happened in those terrifying three minutes between takeoff and impact. In Bell Harbor, New York, I'm Grant Rampey reporting. 
Okay, Grant, as Grant said, the doomed flight was a European-made A300 Airbus. The model debuted back in 1974, built by a French-British team to challenge America's jetliner industry. There are currently about 500 Airbuses in service worldwide now. Flight 587 was the sixth Airbus to crash since 1988. Flight 587 went down in a community in the Rockaway section of Queens, New York. Some witnesses say they saw fire and debris shooting out of the side of the jet. Others say it appeared intact. The common thread in all accounts, however, is total disbelief. The wings were there, the tail was there, the nose was there. No smoke coming from it against the blue sky. Just a huge silver plane going straight down. And I see the plane. The engine fall down and the, the plane fall. The pitch then left side and make it straight all the way down. And I see, I see the people 100% in. Several homes in this area were destroyed. As many as six people on the ground are missing and presumed dead tonight. 90% of the people on board Flight 587 were from the Dominican Republic, but at least one family on board was from New England. Five relatives lost in the accident. Kristen Daly, live in Providence, Rhode Island tonight with that story. Kristen. Well, many here in this tight-knit Dominican neighborhood did know the five members of the De La Cruz family who died today, including the people here at the Intercontinental Travel Agency, where that family had booked their trips just a few weeks ago. So as they say, it was a flight to uh, Santa Domingo. I knew right away I had people on that. Brad Rodriguez knew five members of the De La Cruz family were on board Flight 587. He also knew they could have been on a different flight. Originally, they were going to leave from Providence to New York, New York to Santo Domingo. And uh, had they done that, they would have missed that early morning flight of New York. That's my uncle. My What's his Relatives of Clara, Leonardo, 77-year-old Leonte, 19-year-old Glenn, and 12-year-old Carla learned of the devastating news this morning. Tonight, they are gathered to grieve together. But nobody believes us, though. We're uh, some in state of shock. My mom's, you know, uh, I can't even describe what's, how she feels. Alex says the family was thrilled to be headed to Santa Domingo to visit relatives. Now part of that family is wiped out in the blink of an eye. My family was a close family, and uh, you never really realize how, how much of an impact things around the world have on you until it really happens to you. Just a whole family wiped down, just one blink of an eye, just all of them gone. Now the family says that they are in touch with their relatives in Santa Domingo and they are simply waiting for more facts before deciding on what to do next. Meanwhile, the owner of this travel agency says that he is waiting for the final passenger list to be released. He says it's quite possible that he had even more customers on that flight. Live in Providence, Rhode Island, Kristen Daly for the 10 o'clock news. The United Nations is offering its sympathies to the families of those aboard American Flight 587. Members rose from their seats this morning for a moment of silence in honor of the victims. The UN headquarters went into a partial lockdown after the crash as a precaution. No cars or pedestrians were allowed to enter the UN for several hours. The crash in New York directly affected several airports nationwide, obviously, including Logan. Planes had to be diverted away from New York City. Several landing right here in Boston. Christina Huey has reaction from Logan Airport. It was an anxious day at Logan Airport. We were sitting there having bagels and coffee, and suddenly a lady runs down the hall. An airplane went down in New York. An airplane went down in New York, running down the hallway. The news spread quickly through the terminals and ticket lines. An American Airlines plane had crashed in New York City. This man who doesn't want to be identified was at the ticket counter when he heard the news. It's not easy. You know, the person at the counter was in tears and uh, uh, about half the people at the counter disappeared here in the last few minutes. And it wasn't just the psyche of the workers and passengers. The crash had a direct effect on air traffic at Logan. Nine flights originally flying to New York were diverted to Boston. Dozens of flights leaving Logan for New York were delayed or canceled altogether, stranding passengers. I just have to go by ground. They say it's safer to fly, but lately who knows? For some passengers, the crash was just too much to take after September 11th. I've asked them to get my luggage off the plane so I can go ahead and stay here another night. I've changed this. I've had my tickets changed, and we're just going to go ahead and head back until I know. For others, all they could do was pray. 
There are so many possibilities of uh, incidents like these taking place. I mean, you can only protect so far and so much. So uh, there's an additional measure that we believe needs to be taking place, and that's the dimension of faith. We believe that God does protect travelers and that we're asking for his mercy and his covering. In Boston, Christina Huey, the 10 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. Even if it is ruled an accident, today's plane crash rattled an already nervous nation and threatens to undermine efforts to get travelers back into the skies. Jim Smith continues our live coverage from Logan Airport with that side of the story. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Jeff and Karen. This is indeed absolutely the last thing that the airline and travel industry needed. Business was already way down to begin with, and tonight everybody is hoping that it doesn't get even worse. Yes, we can do that, of course. Ginny nissenbaum has been a travel agent for years. She says before September 11th, the industry was having a record yes, year. But then that. everything changed and bookings plummeted. Still, Nissenbaum says the damage has already been done before today. And she doesn't see this latest tragedy making anything worse. We've not had any cancellations at all. Right now, the traveling public, people who are traveling now or thinking about traveling now, are pretty committed to traveling. It was pretty busy at Logan tonight, but those people already had reservations. We wanted to know if today's news would affect future plans, like upcoming holiday travel. Well, you know, believe it or not, I'm flying with my family to Maui in the uh, end of the month after Thanksgiving, so... But, you know, after that flight, I don't think we're going to be flying too much for a while. I think it's still a safe bet. I mean, chances of... Uh getting killed in a, car, in a car crash are much greater than a plane accident. Have to have faith in the airlines and keep traveling. And then there's Nigel and Fiona Hickey. The Hickeys live here, but Nigel is headed back to his native England for a visit. If his wife is nervous, she doesn't show it. The plane that went down today, it doesn't really change that any. It's, um, it's a very remote possibility really that anything's going to happen. How about the upcoming holidays? Do you see people curtailing anything or... I think people will curtail things. I mean, I won't personally, but I'm sure that there'll be a lot of people that are unsure about traveling. It's always tough to gauge people's moods, but this is what it seems to be adding up to tonight. Somebody that has already booked a trip, it doesn't appear that that person will be canceling it. But as far as elective visits, as far as holiday travel, it remains uncertain tonight. We'll have to see what the next few days and weeks bring. At Logan Airport, Jim Smith. The 10 o'clock news. Another incident today in the skies. An unruly passenger aboard a U.S. Airways jet from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C.'s Reagan Airport forced the plane to land at Dulles instead. Air Marshals made the decision to reroute flight 969. They say the man would not sit down prior to landing. After the plane landed, he was taken into custody. His bags were removed from the plane before it continued on to Reagan about 40 miles away. Now, in wake of today's crash, the airline industry took a major hit on Wall Street today. Shares of American's parent AMR fell 9%. UAL, parent company of United and Delta Airlines, saw their stock dip 5%. Overall, the American Stock Exchange's airline index fell 6%. And of course, be sure to stay with WB56 for continuing coverage of the crash of American Airlines Flight 587. We'll have complete team coverage, including any overnight developments tomorrow on Boston's WB in the morning, beginning at 5 a.m. And time to check tomorrow's weather. Here's Mike Walken with the early bird weather forecast. Well, today was a little bit better than yesterday in terms of wind. Yesterday it was howling. Today, wind gusts just up over 20 miles per hour. But look at these high temperatures today, just into the mid-40s, about 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. And we're cooling off fast under clear skies. It's 34 in the city, but once you get outside the city, most of the readings are already into the mid-20s. Looks like it'll be one of the coldest nights of the year. We've also had strong northwesterly winds blowing across the Great Lakes, picking up a little bit of moisture. And this is actually some snow flurry activity that was going on up to the north today. Even a few flurries in the area around here. Well, what can you expect tomorrow morning? No flurries in the air. We'll just be looking at sunny skies, but it will be cold. Tomorrow morning, bundle up. Temperatures in the upper 20s. There's a warming trend coming, and I'll have more details on that a little bit later on. The Beacon Hill budget battle is getting uglier by the day. I'm John Keller showing you the strategy behind the rhetoric coming up on the 10 o'clock news. Two teens, two arrests, and the shooting death of a teen on the tee. Boston police say the suspects wanted the victim's gold chain. Details at 1021. At 1026, a warning tonight to all parents whose children use Ritalin. Experts say it could cause long-term effects. And the pilot of American Airlines Flight 11 may be remembered more for his efforts to preserve land. Find out what Congress is doing to memorialize Drakeit native John Oganowski. 
Karen Marinella, Jeff Bard, Mike Wacom, Mike Rattay. You're watching the 10 o'clock news on Boston's WB56. Tonight's early bird weather was sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. Loosen up a little. It's creamy. It's delicious. It's Dunkin' Donuts' new vanilla chai. You'll get tea, vanilla, honey, spices, all in an attractive carry-home cup. Act now and receive a handy plastic lid. Order today. Get around with the family there. Gonna eat. Gonna eat my share. It's a fine. It's a fine day. Now Dodge is giving you something special to take home for the holidays. The security of 7-year or 100,000-mile powertrain protection on any new Dodge vehicle. Plus, through November 19th, 0% APR on select 2002 models. It's good to see you, Dad! No thanks! It gives me gas! With turkey on a plate! They say it started very small, as most dreams do. And the dream began to grow. Join us this year as we celebrate the 100th birthday of the man who started it all. Make your plans at DisneyWorld.com. The news continues on Boston's WB56. Dilly dallying, denial, pretending we don't have a problem doesn't make it go away. An angry Governor Swift lashes out at lawmakers failing to agree on a budget. It was due more than three months ago, and the recession means budget cuts will be needed. But Swift says time has quickly run out for state lawmakers to come to terms. More now in tonight's Keller at Large analysis. Is this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. Sometimes... You know, you don't know why they choose the hard way. The governor's husband and kids visited her office this morning, but left early, perhaps to spare them the sight of the brisk spanking she administered to the legislature for its budgetary procrastination. If by Friday they haven't passed a budget, then clearly they're incapable of achieving one, and they should just do mine and then let them blame me for all the tough stuff. Swift huddled with staffers all day, looking for $700 million in budget cuts, an exercise endorsed over the weekend by House Speaker Tom Finneran. And the governor's top fiscal advisor made it clear who they see as the key culprit in the legislature's budgetary deadlock. And President Birmingham has continued to say that he doesn't need help and that he thinks they're almost there. In my view, if, if uh, Birmingham doesn't need help, then Duquette doesn't need help. We don't need inflammatory rhetoric from the Secretary of ANF. Birmingham says he and Finneran are close to a budget agreement, and he claims Swift would go along with his call for a delay in the income tax cut if she were really interested in more than political grandstanding. He tried to downplay the friction between them. But check out this exchange over the governor's plan to spur consumer shopping with a two-day post-Thanksgiving sales tax holiday. It makes all the sense in the world, and if they reject it, it'll just because they'd be mad they didn't think of the idea first. Do you believe that legislative leaders are letting election year politics uh, color their judgment? They can prove me wrong by passing the sales tax holiday. Uh, car dealers tell me nobody's buying cars now because they're waiting for this tax holiday on December 1st and 2nd, so it may well have had a negative effect. Good headline. As this budget battle nears its climax, Jane Swift wants you to see her as the defender of fiscal responsibility and Tom Birmingham as the height of fiscal irresponsibility. Call it a political ploy if you like, but it does give you some insight into just how aggressive candidate Swift can be. On Beacon Hill, John Keller at large for the 10 o'clock news. They're against raising tolls around Boston, but two turnpike officials don't mind asking drivers to pay more out west. Christy Mihos and Jordan Levy, seen here, want to restore tolls on the western end of the Massachusetts Pike. The pair recently voted to delay an increase on the Boston end, causing Governor Jane Swift to seek their resignations. The western mass tolls were eliminated back in 1996 by then-Governor Bill Weld. A top Coast Guard official says Boston Harbor is in fact vulnerable to bioterrorism. Commander Stephen Flynn tells the Boston Globe today thousands of sealed containers that enter the harbor from foreign lands each and every year are rarely inspected. He says they pose a greater risk than natural gas tankers like this one that entered the harbor amid controversy 
last month. One of the men suspected of funneling cash to terrorists through a Dorchester business is in custody tonight. Liban Hussein, who lives in Ottawa, turned himself in to Canadian police today. Liban and his brother Mohammed, arrested last week, ran this office of Barakat North America, which Osama bin Laden founded in 1989. The brothers deny any involvement with terrorists. U.S. military on duty in and around Afghanistan getting a major boost. The USS Stennis set sail for the Arabian Sea today from its dock in San Diego. A crew of 5,500 sailors stood at ease around the edge of the aircraft carrier as loved ones waved goodbye. The Stennis will replace the USS Carl Vinson, which is returning to Washington state. The crew of the Stennis plans on being overseas for at least six months. U.S. officials say the airstrikes in Afghanistan are having a desired effect. U.S. warplanes pounded Taliban targets today, clearing the way for an advance by northern opposition forces. More firepower is on the way. The U.S. carrier Stennis Group, as Karen just said, is heading for the Arabian Sea. As we told you at the top of the show, it looks like the Taliban is clearing out of the Afghan capital of Kabul. Truckloads of Northern Alliance forces armed with rifles and rocket launchers have reportedly begun moving into the city. Now, earlier today, the Northern Alliance said troops would not enter the capital, but surround and wait for the U.N. to come up with a proposal for post-Taliban rule. Osama bin Laden tells a Pakistani journalist he has nuclear and chemical weapons and is prepared to use them. American leaders are calling the al-Qaeda leaders claim, quote, a wild boast. But Hamid Mir says bin Laden alluded to where the weapons may have come from. And he said that you read some reports published in uh, the Western media. These reports says that more than 70 nuclear weapons were stolen from Russia. And these weapons are available uh, in the underworld of uh, the Central Asian states. And uh, anybody can uh, purchase these kind of weapons in $10 million or $20 million. Mir says bin Laden told him he would not initiate a first nuclear strike, but rather use the alleged weapons as a, quote, nuclear deterrent. Well, Homeland Security has its costs. While the federal and state governments are spending billions to beef up security, cities and towns are also paying. In Linfield, the National Guard call has left the police force there with major manpower shortages. Here's Terrell Harris. Veterans Day in Linfield. Citizens gather on the common paying tribute to those who fought for and defend our freedom. May you bless in a special way the men and women serving in our military services this day as they strive to make our world more peaceful. Men and women, full-time soldiers, National Guard. They come from cities and towns across America like Linfield, fighting in various capacities in Operation Enduring Freedom. Linfield police have been hit particularly hard by the call-up, losing 15% of its officers. That's two of the 13 on patrol in this 12-square-mile town. Everybody's, you know, pulling extra weight. We're, I worked 32 hours in two days. And word comes now a new hire has just been called to active duty. Some weeks recently, we've, ha we've had as many as 21 extra shifts that we have to fill for the week. So that's a lot of shifts out of, uh, out of the remainder of patrolmen. And a budget buster. Every vacant shift filled costs overtime. And we budget overtime, you know, in a regular year, but this was not anticipated. So, of course, this will cost us a pretty good amount of money extra. The cost to cities and towns will be enormous. The cost to patrolmen is yet undetermined. In Linfield, Terrell Harris, The 10 O'Clock News. It's been two months and one day. Tonight, crews at Ground Zero continue to work 24-7 to find victims of those September attacks. Two more bodies were pulled from the rubble yesterday and draped with American flags. Tonight, 3,748 people remain missing. 556 bodies have been positively identified. Other stories, two Dorchester teens are under arrest tonight in last week's shooting death of another teen at an MBTA station. 16-year-old Jeffrey Douglas was shot Monday night as he got off the train at the Fields Corner T-stop tonight. Police are charging Adorito, Barbosa, and John Montero with murder. They say they shot Douglas over a necklace. What transpired was a, an attempt to commit an armed robbery um, by Montero and um, Barbosa, a uh, robbery of a gold chain that uh, Mr. Douglas was wearing. Both suspects will be arraigned tomorrow. Newton firefighters use high technology to save one of their own. The firefighter apparently suffered a heart attack while battling a blaze earlier this morning. His colleagues were able to revive him using a portable defibrillator. 
The fireman was taken to St. Elizabeth's Hospital. His name has yet to be released. Well, still ahead on the 10 o'clock news. People over the age of 45 are more likely to develop diabetes. We'll go over the warning signs. That's coming up at 1025. At 1028, word tonight that those smallpox shots you got in the 60s and 70s could still be working. And when you pull out of the parking garage at Logan, be prepared to pay more. Prices are going up. Um, my grandmother, she's the queen. Very strong. My younger sister is one of the best moms I've ever seen. My older sister, who has been my hero my whole life, is a firefighter. I feel so lucky to have them. When you choose the health plan that screens for breast cancer 15% more than the national average, you're making a choice to be well. Fallon Community Health Plan. Be healthy, be strong, be well. Look, we got a lot to do today, so let's make this quick. Get what you need. We're out of here. Agreed? Yes. <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> we know how you feel. And that's why you can shop online and pick up at a nearby store the same day. Or we'll ship to you. Circuit City. We're with you. I think that went really well. Looking to save a little time this holiday season? Then go to BestBuy.com. You can find great gift ideas online. Then when you come to the store, you'll know just what to get. Best Buy. This holiday, turn on the fun. I'm going to be late for my own wedding. No worries. My new Subaru Outback's more stable in a turn than a Lexus RX 300. Gets better gas mileage than a Ford Explorer. And like every Subaru, has the added traction of all-wheel drive. Subaru Outback, the world's first sport utility wagon. Ah, the rugged outdoorsy type. Nice choice. Now you can get an APR as low as 2.9% on all 2002 Outback models. How do you choose the best health plan for your company? You could ask around. Um, Any ideas for a good health plan for my company? Good medical benefits, good doctors, good hospitals. Pharmacy benefits. Right health plan. Good fitness program, maybe. Yeah. Or you could just look at the facts. Tufts Health Plan has been rated number one for member satisfaction six years in a row. And if you can have number one, then why choose anything else? Tufts Health Plan, dedicated to a higher standard. Health Watch is sponsored by Tufts Health Plan. And now, Health Watch on Boston's WB56. Everyone has somewhat of a risk, but your risk rises dramatically if you're over 45. We're talking about diabetes. November is American Diabetes Month, and tonight health officials want you to be aware of your risk. Doctors say if you're overweight, have a family history of diabetes, or live a sedentary lifestyle, you're at high risk for getting diabetes. And once you turn 45, your risk gets even higher. The chances of getting the most common form of diabetes type 2 increases once you reach the age of 45. In fact, uh, almost one in five Americans over the age of 65 are at risk for developing the disease. For more information on diabetes, log on to our website at wb56.com. A drug commonly prescribed to children with attention deficit disorder may cause long-term side effects. University of Buffalo researchers say Ritalin may cause lasting changes in the brain. The effects resemble those seen with users of amphetamines and cocaine. The scientists say although Ritalin is extremely effective in treating ADD, the side effects should be examined. Anthrax spores have been detected in three more Senate office buildings on Capitol Hill, bringing the total number of new cases found over the weekend to 11. The latest finds were made in the offices of California's Barbara Boxer, Indiana's Richard Luger, and New Jersey's John Corzine. Officials say their mail was cross-contaminated, apparently, with this letter sent to Senator Tom Daschle last month. They say the trace amounts of anthrax, however, pose no risk. People vaccinated against smallpox before the government stopped giving the shots back in 1972 could still fight off this disease. Immunity decreases over time, but experts say it can last for decades. 
The U.S. has 15.4 million doses of smallpox vaccine and wants to purchase enough for the entire country. But right now, there are no plans for mass immunizations. Well, still ahead on the 10 o'clock news. Why did this crash happen? We'll talk to an aviation expert about what might have gone terribly wrong. I'm meteorologist Mike Wonkum. This could be the coldest night of the year, but it doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. We'll have all the details in the warm-up coming up next on the 10 o'clock news. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers on Boston's WB56. Civic Coupe from Honda. It has earned a quadruple five-star safety rating. But once you leave it, you're on your own. A uh, little help? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. The kid thinks you're his mother. Can my son have a cookie? <laughs> I want a muffin. He wants a muffin. Shaw's has jumbo muffins, 15 kinds. This whole bakery's better than ours. Shaw's has over 400 items, but they make sure each store stocks with the people who shop there like best. Honey. Shaw's supermarkets. Don't bother the nice lady. The choice is yours. Love your outfit. We've bought new BMWs from BMW of Peabody. But when she was born, our priorities changed. We started to look at BMW of Peabody's certified pre-owned BMWs. Well, they're safe, good value, they're beautiful automobiles. There's a full factory warranty and BMW financing. The certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Peabody, they're just perfect for a growing family. Hi, honey. Financing by BMW Financial. Certified pre-owned BMWs from BMW of Peabody. New England is... When your windshield's busted Call Giant Glass 1-800-54-GIANT Sunrise Sunpass Wherever you are Call number 1-800-54-GIANT From Maine to Providence Worcester to Cape Cod of the Islands The Big Blue Band will come to you With service as big as our name Giant 1-800-54-GIANT Now's your chance. Get special 0% APR financing on select 2001 and 2002 Ford cars, built for top trucks and SUVs. Nothing beats 0% financing. Choose from America's favorite vehicles. Select Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs now come with 0% financing. Nothing beats 0%. And nothing, nothing beats the money you'll save. Don't wait. See your New England Ford dealer today. The American Airlines jet that crashed in Queens today lost all or part of its engine in flight. Tonight, investigators are pointing toward mechanical failure rather than terrorism, sabotage of some sort. Mm. So what went wrong? Tonight, we're joined by MIT professor John Hansman, an expert in aviation. Thank Thanks you for so joining much, us. Thanks uh, for joining us. Mm. Now, this uh, A300 Airbus is equipped with GE engines. Uh, what is their record in the past, the GE engines? Um, there have been a number of uh, what we call uncontained engine failures in uh, these GE engines. Uh, I think U.S. Air had one blow up in an, uh, on the ground during a test. Uh, there have been a number of failures of what we call the low pressure uh, uh, turbine. So um, it's, it's been a spotty record with this engine. Mm. I was going to ask you what you thought about the reports that this plane started to fall apart up in the sky. Does yeah. that lend you to believe that this was mechanical rather than sabotage? Or is it too early to tell in your opinion? It's really too early to tell. What we know is, is really from the physical evidence. We know that the, uh, uh, one of the engines came off and was separated what from the main engine? impact zone. Uh, we also have found the tail was in the water uh, before the main impact zone, so that indicates that the airplane came apart in the air. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know yet what the cause is. Um, th there's some speculation it may have been uncontained engine failure, but they're also looking to the possibility of an explosion on board. Now, what about the A300 Airbus? Is it a reliable aircraft? It's foreign made? Uh, it's made, uh, made by Airbus, which is a consortium in Europe. Uh, it's one of their first airplanes. Um, it's, uh, it's, again, an airplane that's had a little bit of a spotty record. Um, uh, there have been a number of, of accidents. 
Um, not of this type, though. Uh, there's never been an uncontained engine failure that uh, brought one down, as far as I know. A lot of concern from the people of Queens for years, from what I understand, of a flight patterns. They've been battling with JFK for quite some time. What was the issue there? Well, um, they're very close to JFK Airport. Uh, airplanes are taking off and flying over them. Um, it's sort of like the problem we have near uh, Logan here, that uh, it's a combination of noise, environmental. Not much yeah. you can do about it, though. Well, no, not, you got to take off somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Professor, thanks so much for joining sure. us tonight. We appreciate your insight. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now let's get a check of the weather now with Mike Wonkum. Well, Karen, all day today the wind was howling from the northwest. Now that wind was picking up some moisture, and you can see as it moved across the Great Lakes, picking up additional moisture. There was actually a little bit of light snow up into the mountains. Also a few flurries kind of floating around in the area, but most of us didn't see anything too much out of it. Tonight will be the coldest night. You can see the clear skies that have developed. These are the snow showers that we saw earlier today, but with the clear skies, the wind calming down, perfect ingredients for things to cool off, and tonight we will all dip into the 20s. There possibly could be even some areas dipping into the teens, especially as you get into some of the cold valleys to the west. Well, here's what we're dealing with temperatures right now. Notice the readings, 20s and 30s here, a little warmer as you head to the south, but notice out to the west, 40s and 50s. Milwaukee still at 47 degrees at this hour. There is a lot of warm air out there. That warm air is coming this way, and along with it, it's going to drag a little bit of rain with it, but I think the big story is going to be how warm it gets on Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday, we could be into the 60s. Here are the current readings now, and they are chilly. The only place is still above freezing, Boston and the Cape and the Islands, and even there, it's getting quite cold right now. And in Boston, along with that temperature reading, 33 degrees. The dew point is at 18 degrees. Northwest winds at 8 miles per hour, giving us a wind chill index of 26 degrees above zero. The high temperature today, 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. Low this morning, 31. We're rapidly approaching it. We may actually get a new low temperature between now and midnight, and then we'll get even colder as we look towards tomorrow morning. Here were the high temperatures today. Again, just into the mid-40s. Worcester, not even that warm. 39 for a high temperature. And these aren't really that far off of normal. We've just been above normal. Now we're going below normal. By Wednesday and Thursday, we'll be above normal. Again, once again, normal is just the averaging of extremes. So what about those warm temperatures out here to the west? This is a nice big bubble. Look at this. Bismarck, North Dakota, 58 degrees this afternoon. Even some 50s sitting into southern Canada. Now this warm air is going to try making a run at us, and it will accomplish it, it looks like, for Wednesday and Thursday. And then we'll get back into some cooler temperatures, especially as we head towards next week. Well, across the nation, Generally, it's been just a little bit of cloud cover floating through our area, but the west coast is really starting to get pounded by this storm system. Anything above 5,000 feet in Nevada and California has been getting one to two feet of snow. They've also been getting about one to three inches of rain along the coast. Very unsettled. It looks like rain all the way up through Seattle. That storm system's out there. It's not going to be affecting us, but you will notice this little area of moisture up around the Minneapolis area. This area is going to be moving its way toward us, and we may see a few sprinkles because this is the leading edge of warm air, the cold air in place today. As that warm air lifts in here, we could possibly get just a few sprinkles as this moves in here on Wednesday. Then the warm air settles in here for a couple of days, and we get to enjoy it before the next wave of cold air moves in. That'll be towards the end of the week. So here's the forecast, starting with tonight. Tonight, under clear skies, it'll be low 20s in the suburbs. Downtown Boston, about 28 degrees, with westerly winds at just 10 miles per hour. So that means tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to need a coat, because it'll be sunny with temperatures in the upper 20s, a light westerly wind at 5 to 10. During the afternoon, we stay sunny, but we don't, stay, we don't warm up very much. 48 for a high temperature, a south westerly wind at 10. Now, anytime the wind goes to the southwest, that's an indication that warmer air is coming. So it won't be nearly as cold as we look towards Wednesday with partly cloudy skies, 56 for high, possibly a few sprinkles during the afternoon hours. What about the seven-day forecast? Well, I promise you a nice warming trend because as we get into Thursday, look at the high temperature, 62 degrees. Now, Friday, there is a chance of seeing some more showers in. I'm not looking for much rain out of it, but it does signal the beginning of a new wave of cold air moving in. Of course, it'll move in for Saturday and Sunday, so high temperatures back to where we are today, which is just generally in the upper 40s. Now, it was cold and windy again today, which brings us to tonight's Wonkum's weather quiz. What does the wind chill index measure? Is it how cold it is? How windy it is, how windy it feels, or how cold it feels. And I'll have the answer for you a little bit later on. How cold it feels. Well, you're I'm not, not tell supposed you the answer to yet. talk about oh, I'm it. I'm sorry. Now. Well, we'll talk. And you might be wrong that. anyway. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> All right, stay right there. Much more ahead tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Be ready to spend much more money for parking at Logan Airport. We'll tell you how much more. And a Drake pilot is remembered by the U.S. Congress for his efforts to keep farmland as it is. 
airline stocks battle some turbulence on Wall Street, and Fleet is banking on a judge in its lawsuit against Advanta. I'm Dave Anthony. We'll have those stories, and we'll go through the numbers on a mixed day on the markets coming up in the Boston Business Journal report. Get connected to the 10 o'clock news anytime by visiting us online at WB56.com. Uh, Shelly, listen, it's Greg. I'm at the dentist. Yeah, okay. Sh Shelly? I, I want to come into work. They don't know what I've got. <coughs> I have a hoof. I got the chicken pump. Chicken pox. 24 hour, like, mumps. Uh, what else can I have? I am really sick. Both ears, yeah, gone. I'm, I'm hemorrhagic. I'm in traction. The Acura MDX with torque managing four-wheel drive. I was eating wax fruit this week. No. Taking the SUV to a place it's never been before. I love my work. I really have the best job in the world. Hey, how are you? Everyone that I have ever met likes everyday low prices. I know if I came here, I got the best deal. You can go into Walmart and know it's a huge team effort to ensure that you're getting these low prices. It makes me feel like I've got somebody on my side. On our 39th anniversary and every day of the year, always. When I walk out of here with my receipt, I see my savings. Everyone likes to save money. It makes you feel good. This morning, a great city woke up to a new day. Millions of people crowded its streets, businesses, theaters, restaurants, and stadiums. And one simple phrase was repeated over and over again. I love New York. 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 We, we love, love New, New York. York. Now more than ever. Come see New York United in its finest hour. And you'll say it too. I love New York. you love about Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs, this may be the most interesting. Announcing interest-free financing on all 2002 Corollas, Tundras, and 4Runners that could save you thousands. See your New England Toyota dealer now. Get the feeling. Toyota. Now, the Boston Business Journal report on WB56. Wall Street rebounds from a bad opening and GM extends its no-interest loans. Dave Anthony's in the newsroom of the Boston Business Journal with more. Hello, Dave. Hi, Karen, and good evening, everyone. Well, the stock market ended mixed today, and that was good considering how things started. Once the opening bell rang, the Dow moved into negative territory and fast. As investors reacted to the first news of the plane crash, the Dow down 200 points. But it recovered most of its lost ground, and the Nasdaq ended the session up. However, American Airlines dropped 9%, while other airlines and leisure-related stocks also fell on concern about consumer confidence in traveling. Well, Fleet is hoping to bank $126 million in a lawsuit that returns to court tomorrow. New England's biggest bank will ask a judge to make Advanta pay at that amount in a dispute that dates back to Fleet's 1998 purchase of an Advanta credit card unit. The judge has already ruled Advanta violated their agreement, with Fleet alleging it was duped into overpaying for the business. Advanta, though, has filed a counterclaim, wanting Fleet to pay it $101 million. Well, the Cambridge company has received FDA clearance to another of its drug testing operations. Psychomedics has picked up approval to test human hair for cocaine, in addition to its approved opiates testing. Psychomedics tests these samples for corporate America, helping companies screen for drug use, especially for hiring. However, the slowdown in the economy has hurt Psychomedic's bottom line after the terrorist attacks especially, with third quarter revenue and profit down from a year ago. GM is accelerating its zero financing offers. The automaker will now give car and truck buyers no interest, essentially free loans through the end of the year. However, it's putting the brakes on some of these deals. GM will only offer the zero financing for three-year terms, and not all models will qualify. Cadillacs, Corvettes, and some new Saturn vehicles will be excluded. 
Now let's go to the numbers from Wall Street for the day as we see the Dow finish down 53. Again, it was down about 200 points early in the day, so a nice recovery. The Nasdaq finishing up 11 points, the S&P down 2, but it was light trading today with a Veterans Day holiday. The bond market wasn't even open at all. That's what we're following in the Boston Business Journal newsroom tonight. I'm Dave Anthony. Karen, back to you. Thank you, Dave. And don't forget to start your day with the latest business news and information every weekday morning at 6.15 and 7.15 on Boston's WB in the Morning. And get ready to open your wallets. If you're flying out of Logan Airport, Massport announced new parking rates today, and they're going up. The daily rate has increased to $22, and it will now cost you 99 bucks to leave your car at Logan for a week. There is some good news, however. If you're just dropping someone off, it's now only $2 for the first half hour. Still ahead on the 10 o'clock news. A local congressman helps organize a special night to help the people who lost family on September 11th. And he's certainly a panda with a mission. We'll tell you why Ling Ling is heading eastward. Excuse me, mister. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Barbie stuff's not where it used to be. Oh, well, you noticed, did you? Well, here, see, everything's been totally redesigned, you know, to help the parents. Imaginarium for learning toys, Animal Alley for stuffed animals. Oh, here, here, watch this. <laughs> this drives the man just crazy. And here we have the Barbie shop. Matching shoes and stretch pants over here. You should know a lot about Barbie. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. Come to our grand reopening and see the totally redesigned new Toys R Us. Okay, my turn to be Skipper. Presenting the all-new Mercury Mountaineer with the standard third row seat. Fold it down and it disappears, yielding a cavernous amount of cargo space. Raise it and seven adults can sit comfortably for the most third row leg and headroom in its class. The Mercury Mountaineer. Ingenuity built cities. Now it brings you an SUV. Now get 0.0% financing on the all new 2002 Mountaineer at your Mercury dealer. Ah, the great outdoors. Made even greater with all wheel drive. A remarkably civilized ride. And better fuel economy than many SUVs. The Volvo Cross Country. It'll change how far you can go with all wheel drive. Federal law requires all advertisers to provide reasonable support for advertising claims before they are made. Reasonable enough? BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Drive one at your local BMW center. I've been watching Karen and Jeff for years on the 10 o'clock news. Good evening, I'm Jeff Barnes. And I'm Karen Marinella. Now I'm hooked on Stephen Frank in the morning. Introducing Boston's new one-of-a-kind morning show. Boston's WB in the morning. Boston's news, Boston's weather, and Boston's traffic. When the other stations switch to the New York shows. WB in the morning stays local, and I like that. News, weather, traffic, and a little bit of fun. If you watch the 10 o'clock news. You should be watching Boston's WB in the morning. Weekdays from 5 to 8 on WB 56. Singer Don Henley is coming to town. The rock and roller is getting ready for a special concert benefiting the kids of the Merrimack Valley who lost parents in the September 11th attacks. Congressman Marty Meehan is organizing this event. He sat down with our WB in the Morning co-host Stephanie Lydon today. There are 30 children in Meehan's district left without parents. He says the money will go directly to them. And there are 30 children who either don't have a mother or don't have a father. So the children who uh, they are affected the most so what we've done is we've established a foundation we're going to have a great concert and raise money to get assistance to those uh, children directly and you know there's been a lot of controversy about getting money directly to victims families we're going to be able to do that because we know exactly who we're raising the money for and this is scholarship now the don henley benefit concert is december 5th at the Songus arena in lowell tickets went on sale today at ticketmaster before American Airlines pilot John Oganowski died on Flight 11, he was known for his dedication to keep farmland in the hands of farmers. Now, the U.S. Congress wants to name a federal program which helps European farmers grow native vegetables in Oganowski's name. 
For years, he ran a program on his farm to teach Cambodians how to farm. Oganowski was the fourth generation to farm the land in Drakit. Mike Rattay joining us now with a look at sports. Uh, some good news coming out of Foxboro uh, yesterday. It was hard to watch, though. I mean, it you know it, it didn't exactly come together it didn't real come nicely. Easily. You know, mm -hmm. had to work for it. But I think that's part of the okay. specialness. Is that a word? Yes, yeah, part of the, you know it's, yeah. it's part of the special thing going on with this team right now. Would you agree? I'm I love and life. Thought, just I'll just love keep flapping life. my lips on this whole thing. <laughs> Tom Brady and the Patriots win again yesterday, but how much longer? Can they or will they stick with Brady? The doctor says Drew's ready and he's healed. Something has to give soon. We'll fill you in. And he's a panda with a mission. We'll tell you where Ling Ling is heading. Meet the students at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Draco Malfoy. It's true then. Harry Potter has come to Hogwarts. He's rather disagreeable, isn't he? Ronald Weasley. That's a wizard's chess. Hermione Granger. I check this out for a bit of light reading. This is light. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Mr. Potter. Warner Brothers Pictures presents Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Rated PG. Right, I know. Cash only. The all new A4. Suddenly, every ride's exciting. I'm meteorologist Mike Wonkin with your New England Chrysler Plymouth Travelers forecast. There's a few areas around the country that will have some light showers tomorrow. No big problems, just light rain in Kansas City and Chicago, a few thunder showers in Miami, and heavier rain in Seattle. There's a place where people smile big, eat good, and always score a sweet deal. It's got to be Applebee's. new honey pepper sauce. It makes honey grilled chicken and honey pepper steak a taste of honey heaven. Throw in our famous riblets, now honey barbecue style, and you'll know why. It's got to be Applebee's. To help keep America rolling, here's an important announcement from your local Pontiac dealer. Until November 18th, Pontiac will offer qualified buyers 0% APR GMAC financing on every new 2001 and 2002 model. Every Grand Am, Grand Prix, Sunfire, Montana, every Aztec, Firebird, and Bonneville. Interest-free financing on every new Pontiac. In a small way, it's our way of saying, let's keep America rolling. See your local Pontiac dealer for details. <laughs> on the next Everybody Loves Raymond. Tonight at 11.30 on WB56. This portion of the 10 o'clock news is sponsored by Maxu. And now, sports with Mike Rattay on WB56. I mean, Tom knows what his situation is. There's, no, You know, Drew is, is in a process where he's coming back from a serious injury. And, and we've laid out the steps that that we'll have to take in that return. You can just feel it, can't you? It's coming. It's coming fast. The coach gets paid to make the tough call, and soon he will. Seven weeks after Drew Bledsoe is steamrolled by the Jets' Mo Lewis, he has been cleared for contact. Bill Belichick said today, Brady will start Sunday night against St. Louis, but the point here is, is that Tom Brady is behind all five Patriots' wins. Decision day is closing in, but not quite yet. I think that... Uh... You know, Drew has, uh, oh, any player, it's just not, I mean, Drew is the specific player in this case, but it's any player has, has several steps that they have to take on the way back from a, a you know, a, a lengthy injury. This one's been you know, seven weeks, and uh, he's taken some of those, and there's still some more to take, and, and uh, we'll evaluate the progress as, it, as we go along. Now, Bledsoe will speak tomorrow at Mass General Hospital. We'll bring you that tomorrow night. Brand new Sports Zone poll question for the week. Will Drew Bledsoe start again, period, this season? At any point, yes or no? What do you think? Vote online, WB56.com. Results Sunday in the zone. Well, as we said, it wasn't pretty, but Antoine Smith and the Patriots got past the Bills yesterday. Significant because it does get them over 500. It gets much tougher from here, though, with St. Louis and New Orleans coming in the next couple of weeks. 
The last time I had a taste over 500 was uh, first half of my rookie season when we went six and two, and uh, you know it's, it's been a long road. You know we five and four, and uh, you know it feels good, man. It feels good. And There's no way you're going to be too high on yourselves, knowing who's coming in here the next couple of weeks. Exactly. We got some. We got some. We got some studs coming in here the next couple of weeks, and uh, you know, but I think we're going. We're going. We're going to be ready to step up for the challenge. Former Patriot lineman Leon Gray died over the weekend. He was found in his Roxbury apartment. Gray spent six seasons with the Patriots, played in two Pro Bowls, and was a force alongside John Hanna. They believe he died of natural causes. Leon Gray was 49 years old. Boston College came this close to beating number one ranked Miami on Saturday. That, of course, without the nation's leading rusher. Instead, William Green watched the game on television. Meantime, a report in the Boston Globe said Green had made up his mind to leave school after this season and go to the NFL. Today, Green denied that report. He also admitted that, yes, rules are rules. Uh, yes, the punishment fits the crime. Uh, coach sets rules here for everybody, and, and we all have to follow those rules. You know, it's just good to be back and to just, just go out on the field again and be with the guys. Uh, Ryan, when I ran on the field yesterday, the first thing Coach O'Brien said was, hey, number one, it's good to have you back. And, Say, Coach, it's great to be back. Yeah, he is fast. No question about that. They need him. Division I AA rankings and New England well represented this week. Harvard, with their victory over Penn on Saturday, leaps over the Quakers. Crimson jump to number 22 in the poll. Major League Baseball handing out Rookie of the Year awards today. Ichiro Suzuki of the Mariners in the American League. The Cardinals' Albert Pulios is the guy in the National League. BC basketball team opens its season Sunday at home against Boston University. Final exhibition tune-up tonight against the Minnesota Panthers. Senior Kenny Walls looking for a big year with the lay-in. He led the Eagles with 21. Uka Agbai, beginning his junior season, makes a preseason statement with the jam inside here. And Ryan Sidney with a nice move inside for two. Sydney had 12 points. BC wins it 81-75. They play for real on Sunday. UMass playing its last preseason game tonight against the EA Sports All-Stars. They win 76-67. UMass basketball show returns right here to the WB next Sunday with a whole new look. First-year coach Steve Lapis leading the Minutemen this year. It's all right here Sunday night, 11:30 on WB 56. All right, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Finally tonight, he's a panda heading on a rather important mission. Ling Ling enjoyed his last stalk of bamboo in Tokyo earlier today. He's now on his way to Mexico. The purpose of this vacation, to be fruitful and multiply. While away, Ling Ling will stay at a zoo in Mexico City where three female pandas await him and are currently in their mating season. So what's the wake up weather, Michael? The wake up weather is kind of chilly tomorrow morning. Ooh, okay. Actually, it's probably one of the coldest mornings you're going to have to face tomorrow morning. We'll start things off. Plenty of sunshine, but it will be cold. The one good thing about tomorrow is there's a lack of wind. So sunny skies during the morning, about 28 degrees in the city. Colder in the suburbs, mostly sunny and 48 during the afternoon. And you know, we have a new and improved wind chill index this winter. It's not going to have some of those numbers that we saw like 4,000 degrees below zero. It's a little more closer to what it's supposed to be. And that brings us to tonight's question. What does the wind chill index measure? Is it how cold it is? how windy it is, how windy it feels, or how cold it feels. Want a good guess, Jeff? Yeah, I'd I, I stick with my uh, guess before, how cold it feels. Right, exactly, how cold yeah. it feels. Now, the, the next question you have is, does it affect your car? Oh, sure. No, it doesn't. Oh, it sure does it not. Does. It only affects humans. It affects yeah. how you feel, not your car. You can't get a car colder with a strong wind on it. My so. car has a personality. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> right. It's always Perfect. the shop is what the problem is. All right, All right. thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. As we told you at the top of the program, looks like the Taliban has deserted the city of Kabul, Afghanistan, after a series of military victories by the Northern Alliance. As they left, witnesses say the Taliban took with them eight foreign aid workers, including those two Americans accused mm -hmm. of spreading Christianity in the Muslim country. Of course, we'll be following the story all night long, and we'll have the very latest on Boston's WB in the morning, beginning at 5 a.m. That's Until all the then. time we have for tonight. Good night. Take care.
there's one brand of truck strong enough to carry the American spirit. Chevrolet. And right now, get 0% financing on every new truck we build. That could save you over $3,600 on a 2002 Chevy Suburban. An SUV designed to give you all the power you need. And you can own one interest-free. Keep America rolling. See your local Chevy dealer today. We came in great waves, all with the same dream. Work hard, and your children can do even better, reach even higher. That was the promise of America. And we've kept that promise by building a place of knowledge. A place to pass down all that our hands can do, our minds can think, and our hearts can feel. And we've opened the doors to every American child. And we call that place the public school. But it's more than just a place. It's an idea. The idea that built America. In light of unprecedented action by General Motors, Buick is offering 0.0% APR financing. Now, for a limited time, get interest-free financing on all new Buicks. Every century, Le Sabre, Park Avenue, Regal, and the all-new Rendezvous. Pay no interest, 0% APR. It's a tremendous opportunity. Keep America rolling. See your nearest Buick dealer today. They bomb our embassies. They sabotage.